All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live stream, where we have some new and exciting geometry nodes news. Uh, simulation nodes finally support materials after was it was removed two weeks before 3.6 was released due to a bug. And now, half a year later, maybe a little over half a year later, it has been fixed. And there are a few other little improvements that I want to touch on, so let's go and talk about that. And also, the uh, Dragon Trail uh, effect that I posted this week, I'll go over that a little bit. And I'll need to make some upgrades to my particle simulation system, because what you're currently seeing is a modified version of that. Alright, so... Yeah, let's get started with the Dragon uh, Trails explanation first, because we're already here. So, this is a variant of my particle simulation system that is out on Gumroad for free, and this one is pretty simple. I need to clean up this file. Oof. But, with this one, most of the nodes are just set up. In this case, just points on the Dragon, just a small selection of them, because if you have too many, it lags out. A downside of geometry nodes is that it is notoriously slow. It can't use the GPU for all of this. So with this, I changed the mesh to points, set an ID, set a color, even though this is completely unnecessary for this version. So I will just eliminate that right now because this part was just not visible in the final render. I should really clean these up before streaming. But anyway... Here, let's just go and do all this. So this is the part of the trail. Let me go and connect only that part of the output. As we can see here, we just plug that into the trails output. And then as we can see, there's now trails, which again, face the camera, because that's the way I set it up. A few little changes that I made to the trail uh, node group is that I made it so that uh, it'll be camera aligned, but also you can assign the velocity tangent which was the default but now i switched it so that it would be a um something you would have to enable because not every particle or in this case not every point has a velocity um but it does still need an id that's why there's the set id node over there i set a random value just because and then the special sauce with this version is that i also added an offset parameter to the trail so all the kind of distortion that happens after the wave, and also I set the resolution down because there's just, it's so slow. Just, I don't think there's a way I can make it faster with the up resing enabled. Like that's not too bad, but still not great. So I'm just going to keep it at the low res version. But anyway, I have it so that as the age goes on, the distortion goes up. So in this case, I can offset this so that I can look like the dragon is moving fast, even though it's stationary. And also, let me do this so that you can see the dragon model. This one um, I got off of Sketchfab. You can find the link in the video description of the final render. Uh, but it's a very good dragon model. I just got that, put the separated a few points, and then trailed them with this setup. And also, here's more noise, which, again, since this is the low-resolution mode, it doesn't look that great. But, anyway. Okay. But yeah, that's that part. And then the second part of the simulation... Sorry that I'm going so fast, but I do not have too much time to go over all of this, so I'm just doing a brief explanation. The second part is the uh, actual particles, so not the trailed ones, just particles. Here we can see that there are points spawned in on the surface of the dragon and they keep jittering every single frame because these ones spawn in and they do not need to be temporally consistent like the tracked trails. And then what I do next is I offset these by their velocity because I get the velocity from the mesh. Here's the node group for that. I also store... Man, there's a reason this is a branch and not the main one because I'm still experimenting quite a bit with this. I store the velocity here, which is in the free setup that's up on Gumroad. But I also experimented with getting the acceleration, which is just the velocity difference per frame. Still not sure if I'm going to keep that. I didn't use it in this version, but anyway. So we have that. 
and then the particles they delay they're offset by the velocity which dithers the particle spawning so that it doesn't look super stepped i could add in sub steps but that would be a very involved and difficult process that i do not want to deal with so here we can see that there is dithering on that. Well, if I were to disable this aspect of it, we can see that you can clearly notice the stepping. So there's that. Let me re-enable it so that it looks a lot more... Wait. I... Hmm. Did the cache just not reset? It's still a little apparent, but it shouldn't be... Hmm. Well, I'll reset the file at the end, just in case I broke something. But then we have the particles like that, and then I trail these particles with just one frame, which, as we can see, it is very, very expensive. I don't know how many how many particles do we have right here. Let's go and take a look. So in the spreadsheet, we can see that we have uh, zero, apparently. Oh, oh. Wait, what? Where are point clouds in a drop down? That must be new. I will check that out. But we have 23,000 points in here. And unfortunately, Blender lags out when you have over 20,000 instances. In my case, I don't have the most powerful CPU. I think it's an Intel i5. So I'm using the trail method, which is all just slightly faster. So when you have both of those together, the particles and all that look pretty good. Uh, again, this is the low-res version because the high-res would be a significantly slower, like twice as slow. But that is the case. So there is a brief breakdown of the dragon effect. This could be simplified, but this is the setup. Again, with my particle simulation system, the goal is to make it as convenient as possible. And here, in this use case, it's not most convenient to set up. So, I guess ideally, I would make a node group for spawning in points on a moving mesh, and then adding in the dithering, like basically putting all this into a node group to make it simple. And then the same thing here as well. So, that is the goal make something convenient. As for the displacement over time, uh, the trail offset, I don't think I can, um, I don't think I can make that any smaller than it is right now. Like, I could try making it a node group, but it would be so, it would be quite a few parameters that I'm not sure it would be more convenient. But yes, that is the case. So, that's the dragon effect. Uh, now I want to go and showcase what's new in geometry nodes for this week this week is the last week of active development in geometry nodes because they're moving on to uh bcon 3 which is when there are no new effects just bug fixes and since there is that geometry node development freeze it'll probably be the last that we have for a while which is unfortunate but they do not have the time to uh do more in that case all right, so here let's do just a simple showcase of materials working in geometry nodes. I have the latest build that I downloaded today from blender.org, the experimental 4.1 build. Let me just change some colors so that we can see this. So before, if you were to use a simulation zone, anytime before, uh, I guess basically today or yesterday, but also after two weeks before 3.6 got released this the materials would just get wiped but now they're actually here and they work quite well so now i can bring back uh setups that i was working on over a year ago because simulation materials used to work two weeks before 3.6 got released a bug was discovered two weeks before release that would cause materials to kind of glitch out a little bit in the render tab. So they um, got rid of materials entirely and they've been missing for the past half year, which has been very annoying, let's just say. So actually, let's see if I can find one of the setups that uh, has, that is reliant on simulation materials working. So one second, everyone. 
I believe... Hmm. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Also, hello to everyone in chat. I know it's been a while. I have been very busy on big projects, which you will see sometime in the future. But at the moment, I cannot talk too much about them. All right, let's go to my simulation projects. Let's see, there is the... Ah, the Cell Fracture Rubik's Cube. Let's go over to this one. So this one was made in the 3.6 alpha. And maybe the beta, I'm not sure. Let's see. So this one, materials would just get completely wiped. Oh no, something's wrong. Something is very much wrong. That is not supposed to happen. Okay, so something has broken. But we can see that the materials work. So that's good. <laughs> Alright. Any word on vertex groups in geometry nodes? Uh, not that I've heard of. Like, uh, it, it's planned, but they do not have time. So this setup, I should probably remake it, because it could probably be made a lot simpler. I know that the Blender devs, when 3.6 got released, the Blender devs made a version of this, just without materials, because those just straight up didn't work. That was a bit um, less complex compared to mine. But yeah, I should go and check that out. But anyway, materials work. That's the important part. There's one other file. I need to check when this one was made. So I will check that out real quick. Let's see. This one was the Rubik's Cube. So when was this made? This was made, um, let's see, it's 28.6.23. Okay. So that, oh wait, that was pretty close to when 3.6 came out. All right. So this other one, which was made 7.05. Uh, 23. So not even that far out from the release. This one, materials would just get wiped whenever they would go through one of these boxes. This was a simple little, um, I guess showcase of swapping out instances, killing one while spawning another. Or was it just, yeah, how did I make this? Let's see, swap instance. Okay, this could probably, this could probably be a lot simpler. I would probably just store a... Yeah. Nowadays, I would just swap an index value and then instance a different um, box on there. But this one, I made it right before 3.6 got released, maybe a month before. And then, um, and then when 3.6 got released, I did a live stream that day while I was going over this. And I was like, wait, why are the materials broken? Because I didn't update my version within the last two weeks. And uh, I was very surprised and not too happy about that breakage. And there was another issue with um, simulations just not working. If you have the cache disabled and then the timeline resets, it breaks. And then you have to change a value manually to do that. So, yeah, 3.6, the release was rough. And now finally in 4.1, most of the issues have been fixed. So, it's good that we finally, right before the LTS release in 4.2, um, simulation nodes are now pretty much complete. There are a few little changes that they want to make uh, going forward. We'll see when they are made. But at the moment, simulation materials now work, and you can swap them out after the baking. And this, uh, the same happens for the bake node. So the bake node was coming around. This one is basically, it's like the simulation node. It uses the same tech as the simulation node. So the reason that materials work is because this node was created. The baking system, I believe, was revamped quite a bit. And then uh, it was fixed, which is very good. Also, hello to the 71 people. That is a lot. Hello and welcome. If there's any projects that you would like to see me go over today, please let me know because at the moment I don't have too many things to go over. Mainly just an update about the Dragon Project, a few fixes to my simulation um, system, and showcasing fixes and stuff like that. So, pretty good. Okay. Let's see, the effect is great. Why, thank you. 
Um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, if you know of a shortcut to invert the value in Blender, like I imagine control C value of three and alt V. I do not know of a system of doing that. Any word on vertex groups? I'll already write that one. Vertex groups are still very much, um, they mentioned that they were going to change them to be generic attributes, but no progress on that front, which is a little annoying because you can read vertex groups and geometry nodes, uh, but you can convert them into generic attributes, but it, it's just weird. It's definitely old technology, well, old code for vertex groups that needs to be updated into the new system. But it would be nice to, one scenario that I've been thinking of is when you have a lot of vertex groups in, say, an armature that you need to blur or soften, or soften to certain conditions and stuff like that, to make things a bit more procedural when you're rigging and stuff like that. You can't quite go through the list of vertex groups and then edit them one by one. You need to kind of manually do that. Which, if you have 100 bones, that can be very, very annoying to set up. Oh, and I also forgot when these go in the trash, they scale down. Interesting. I forgot that I added that. But yeah, that's the system. So, I wonder, what other projects? I didn't do too much uh, research into my old live streams before doing this one, which I probably should have done, just to see what kinds of uh, hiccups I ran into when 3.6 got released. But this is one of them, and it seems to work. So, that's good. Let's see. Show the dragon, please. I already did that earlier in the live stream. It was a brief overview just because. But I guess, you know what? I can boot up. Let's see. Let's go and boot up the other version, which is the mocap version. This one will be a bit faster on stream. So let's go and showcase that. So this one, I think I also uploaded this one. But here we should see... Boom, the trails and all that. It's so good. Uh, it uses basically the same tech as the dragon, uh, not the simplified version. But here, if we just look at the trails, we can see that, wow, the person's jumping. And again, this is just mocap. We separate a few points, trail them, and then it works. And then I use the trail offset to make it look like it's wispy, like a vapor trail. Um, some people said that this looked like the Expecto Patronum uh, effect, which, yeah, it looks like it. And it's good that we can finally have that decades-old technology inside of Blender now. Because before geometry nodes and simulation nodes, there was no good way, there was no, yeah, I'm pretty sure, there was no good way of making trails outside of add-ons, which is very odd that we did not have that ability. I tried it with these cloth simulations back in like 2018 because I was working on some Tron projects, which in Tron, uh, there's the light cycles and you need to have a trail behind them and all that. And I tried making it, but it turns out uh, I couldn't really do it. So what I ended up doing was just having a curve where the object would go and then uh, just reveal it as it would go along according to a shader value, which was very inconvenient. But now we have the ability to do it. We have to do it ourselves, but it is now possible. Did you perform the mocap? Uh, it looks painful. No, this mocap is from Mixamo. Unfortunately, with the motion capture system that I have, it's just a Quest 3. So unfortunately, that means that... Uh, it only tracks your head and your controllers, not too much else. But I have three mocap versions here, as we can see, one that's the diving, one that's jumping, and one that's just a very odd swimming. I think that the person is literally like standing or like laying down on a chair and being moved while doing a swimming motion because, you know, water mocap, only James Cameron has done that. <laughs> but. I do, if I had time, I have quite a few um, ideas for different particle mocap things. One thing that I've wanted to do is a character walking through the bioluminescent, um, al is it algae? But when you see someone, like, I forget what video it was, but someone was walking through like a river, but then there's like bioluminescent particles that show up whenever the person moves which that would be really really cool and completely possible now 
that I have um, the system. And also here are the particles, which the particles are slow just because there are many more. If we had GPU particles, I would be able to do hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions in real time. But uh, unfortunately, that is probably quite a few years in the future. Would be good, though. Like, I think the only possible way we get sim uh, GPU simulations this year is if the volume nodes come out. And then for volume simulations, you basically need GPU sims to have anything close to real time. Or anything close to not taking hours for a simple coffee simulation. <laughs> okay, maybe not hours, but one hour. Um, yeah. So maybe we'll get them sometime, but it would probably have to be... We'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. But yes, I should switch this out for the swimming mesh. Let's uh swap it out. So that's one convenient part. If I did ever make this a node group, it would just be... Oh, look at that. The character's swimming. Which, it's very difficult to see at the moment. So let me switch it to just the trails and no... Yeah, you, you can see that's working here. Let me go and... Nope. Uh, yeah, let me just turn the camera rather than doing the other thing. It is slow, which I am not happy about, but... It is what it is. Oh, wait, and I need to do this as well. Okay. So we can see that this... I think, was this when I used the... the um... Ah, yes, this is where I used the acceleration. So, particles only spawn when there's a significant, significant enough change in velocity. So, if I were to disable that, we would see quite a few more particles, and as we can see, it's lagging a lot, which I'm not the happiest about. Again, geometry nodes, it's not known for being fast. It's known for making some effects possible in Blender that previously you would need add-ons for. So see that would be cool for simulating the bioluminescent plankton in water yes that is what i was meaning to describe it would be very cool and i do plan on doing it when i have time let's see honest question if blender had so poor tools until geometry nodes why did you start using it well i started using blender because one it's free Two, uh, I was around 13, 14 years old when I started, and I wanted to make Minecraft animations. And don't get me wrong, Blender is still very powerful even without geometry nodes. The thing is, it would just... its Before then, it was pretty useless when it came to procedural mesh generation. I have tried in the past. Before geometry nodes became a thing, I tried to make a bridge generator using... Array modifiers and displace modifiers. It was a terrible system. I made my own a very hacky way of getting white noise to work for every mesh array using the UV offset node if the UVs were scaled to zero. And it worked to a degree, but it was terrible. So geometry nodes, even though they're still having a very rough time, it has come a long way, and Blender is much more useful now due to it. It helps me quite a bit in my work. It's just having hiccups at the moment. But yeah, uh, what else should I go over? Because I don't want to stagnate just replaying the same animation too much. Uh, I could showcase that the colors. I do have the colors cycling over time, I believe. So here, even though, again, it's lagging out a lot, we can see that as it goes along, the color switches, and then the trails uh, change accordingly. So that is that. So the material picks. I'll go over this one more time. Uh, let's go and put a new scene here. There we go. Sorry if I'm a, uh, a little bit scatterbrained today. I did not have a good plan. I just knew that I needed to do a little live stream to showcase the simulation nodes upgrades. Which, I say simulation nodes when there is only one simulation node. Which they reflected with 
they made a little name change where this used to be simulation input and simulation output. Now it's just simulation. So now officially simulation nodes is just one node, which is very funny. Because in 3.6, we only got two new nodes. It was this and the index of nearest node. So I guess technically simulation no... Eh. It's splitting hairs, but the hairs are, well, non-simulatable at the moment. I've tried. Uh, let's see. They are, well, I do need to work on the hair simulation system as well, but I do not have time to do it at the moment. Let's see. So yes, as we can see here, materials just work. It should have been like that from day one, but it, it was a hidden bug, and then in three in 4.0, they were thinking about fixing it, but they just cut it too close to Beacon 3. Like in the last week of Beacon 3, the devs were thinking about fixing it and trying out a few things, but they just did not have time because they started rather late for 4.0. So it's a little unfortunate because I had as you saw, some projects from over a year ago that did need materials in order to work, even stuff that used the buffer hack. Uh, materials just worked. But now it's a workaround that is no longer needed. Because before, to make a workaround, I would literally sample the position of the simulated object and then paste that on the original geometry, which is terrible. You shouldn't do it. It's very, very bad. It's not too expensive, but it's more, it's, logically, it's just, okay, you do the simulation here, and then you're just moving, you're doing all the work of moving the geometry, and then you're just putting it to the original mesh. It feels so wasteful, but it was necessary, and it made simulation nodes feel very inadequate, as if it was a very hacky and buggy thing, which it was in 3.6, but now in 4.1, it feels like it's ready which actually i need to test one more thing to see if it actually is ready to be taken seriously which it's useful but it came out in a very very buggy state so here whoops i accidentally pressed Control s let's see Control z ah good okay so another bug has been squashed ah that's good to know so there was a slight issue with simulation nodes where if you would control Z sometimes, it would just break. Like the bake would break this blue, uh, no, not blue, this purple line at the bottom would just break. And then you had to restart your file in order to make it work. This was in 4.0 and not 3.6 as far as I could tell. So I've gotten customers uh, saying, hey, why, why did the simulation nodes break? And I had to explain, that's a bug in Blender, which that shouldn't happen. 4.0, again, had a very rocky release. They needed two emergency updates within the first couple weeks of its release. But simulation nodes got even more bugs, which is unfortunate, which is why I haven't been making stuff for 4.0. It just wasn't... It was very buggy, which I know I talk about that a lot, but it's a big hang-up when trying to make node setups. If the infrastructure you're using is very hacky and needs a lot of workarounds and hacks in order to work, you don't want to make stuff with it until it's stable. But it seems like in 4.1 it will be stable. So I'm looking forward to that. Another thing that I should mention is that the viewer node has been updated. Another thing that I've been wanting quite a bit. So there's the attribute text um, option, which you have seen in previous live streams. But now we can see that uh, the text is just a little bit more visible. It's bigger, and you can actually see what's going on, even if there's a gray background. They were talking about this, and I was a little worried that it wouldn't make it into 4.1, but it did. So now, all these values, you can see them even on a white background or in a dark background. Like, before it was so bad, it was a really dark blue. Let's see if I can find... It was like this hue right here which this it would like these numbers would be imperceptible on the default gray background so i'm very happy that that was changed just so many little updates that were very necessary 
for geometry nodes. We're finally getting them, and now it's feeling a lot better. Here we can see the Boolean values, which I still find it interesting that it's true and false, even though that does make sense for Booleans, but I'm so used to seeing them as 0 and 1 values. Even in the, in the, um, in the spreadsheet. Let's see, let's go right over to... Come on, where's the viewer stuff? I am not seeing... Wait, the viewer should be visible. Ah, there we go. Even in the viewer note, they're visualized as checkboxes rather than true and false. Which it's not bad, it's just a little bit more noisy. So there is that. We have 80 people here and I have not too much to go over. Hello everyone, this is the most amount of people that I've had on a live stream in a while. Maybe it's because I've been streaming less, but welcome. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. And if there are any projects of mine that you would like for me to go over, uh, please just uh, put them in the chat and I'll go over them. Okay, can you show the deer one? Ah, yes, I'll go and do that. So again, with the trails, I'll switch this over to the deer one, which it's in the same file as the dragon one. Which, I, I have a bad habit of combining a lot of my projects into one file. Uh, here, let's go and showcase this. Alright. So here's the dragon. And what I need to do to switch this to the deer is swap, uh, swap, sorry, is to swap out the... Ah, yes, yeah, swap out the mesh for the deer one. So... Here we should see, let's go and hide the dragon model and go over to the deer. Let's see. And I need to turn off the offset right there. So here we should see that the deer model is eh, not that great. Maybe it does need some offset. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I can fix this. So here, hmm, I did quite a bit of editing to the shader to make it compatible with the deer one, but I'll fix it. It'll take a quick second. So here we can see, there we go. It looks kind of like a deer. No, it does not. I need to, I'll fix it. One second, everyone. Here, let's go and just swap it out so that we can only see the particles. Uh, let's switch it so that the particles have... Well, let's do 10 frames worth of trail data. Hmm. Still not good enough. Let's go into the shader editor and make this faster by just eliminating the uh, Voronoi, because that was unnecessary. Hmm. Something's just not quite right. Is that a little bit better? Kind of. I'll fix it. It'll just take a second. Ah, no, that's why. Okay. Seeing the start of the trails. There we go. Now you can see the form of a deer just a little bit right there. So yeah, it's using, it's all using the same tech, but I just really need to save every section. And actually, I didn't even post the deer version. I forgot. I guess you just saw it in the file. I've been forgetting to upload as well, even the stuff in my backlog. I usually save some renders for when I'm busy, but I've been forgetting to even upload the stuff I do have there. Alright. Do you have any ad advice for someone wanting to start making tutorials on geometry nodes? Um, I guess the best... well, it's been a while since I've done tutorials, but don't do it all in one take. For all my previous tutorials besides the last one, I would try doing them all in one take, which would lead to me re-recording some of them like 20 to 30 times. But with... If you just cut, edit it, cut out the ums and uhs and the tangents afterwards, it's just so much easier to work with. Whenever you mess up or say something wrong, which as you can see I do quite frequently, you just go and say, whoop. Let's go and fix that later. Fix it in post, which is something that you should only do rarely, but in recordings it's very convenient. Alright. 
So one thing that I do need to do, which I guess I'll do in the meantime because I have not too much else uh, to go over, I'll go and fix up my particle system to add in the changes. Oops, accidentally clicked the wrong thing there on OBS. Okay, where is my simulation system? Okay, so the things that I need to add into the particle trails to make it compatible with the other system are an offset parameter and the option to use the curve tangent for the to derive the normal from. So at the moment, these will just trace. These will just trace where particles were, but in the dragon option, I made it so that some noise would affect it over time, making it look like there was wind advection, even though it was just a simple offset. So I need to add that. Fortunately, since I've already done that once, I can do it again. All I need to do is add an 8-set position node right here, and then add in a group input right here, and then boom, it's done. Simple as that. Just needs a name and to be put in the correct place. So just offset. There we go. And let's hide the value by default. Let's put that into... This feels a bit different, but I'm not sure if anything actually changed. We can put that right in there and that should, should work. So there we go. And then to fix the tangent issues, because for this I usually use... To point it towards the camera, you need a custom curve normal. Another reason why this is only compatible with 4.1. This did not exist. Another thing that we should have had like three updates ago, but better late than never. Um, when the set curve normal was released, a custom normal should have been an option. There have been so many scenarios that have needed that, that I've worked with, and the workarounds would be to spawn in whatever curve profile you would have with a scale of one or no scale of zero and then apply the offsets manually in post which is inefficient and just annoying but it's good we have it now but with the curve normal this relies on the velocity parameter because i thought oh the particles will always have velocity so i don't need to add in an option for that but the reason that I do need a tangent option is because when you want to trail a mesh, which I didn't think of originally, the mesh usually doesn't have a velocity unless you manually add that with a node group that, again, is in this file. By the way, I should mention, again, this file is up on Gumroad for free. It's for 4.1. You could play around with it. It should be pretty fairly convenient to use. In this setup, the biggest part here is spawning in the particles randomly, and also storing a custom attribute, which is an option here to make the particles turn orange once they hit uh, any of the colliders first. So that is that. So the offset is now working, and now I just need to add in the option to switch from the velocity normal or tangents to the curve tangents. There we go, I just need a switch node. So the default will be true because it's technically more accurate to use the particle velocity. And since this is a particle simulation system, it makes sense. All right, so this will be um, trail tangents. Trail tangents. There we go. It's been a while. All right, let's go and switch that out. And then I need one more group input for this. I wish we had nested sub panels in order to make this more organized, but oh well. Uh, group inputs. So now that we have that, or velocity tangent, yeah. Velocity tangent. Let's see, so, yeah, that should work pretty well. So making your own particle system, the math is one annoyance, but another one is just how, the, like, hundreds of options that you need to account for. 
Like this whole setup is just to make a curved profile that will switch to a different mode if you have them be camera aligned. Which I've been thinking about removing this and just making it so that they're always camera aligned because it's faster. But I wasn't sure if there would be lots of errors in that case. So here, that is now uh, fixed. That's there, and now you don't even need... Actually, wait, why is that not a single value? Um, I mean, it should be fine even if it's not a single value, but it feels like it should be. Eh, it's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. So there we go. Now, in theory, you should be able to make the trail system that you saw in the Dragon model using this setup, which this will be upgraded and put up to Gumroad probably sometime today. I'll see when I have time. And also the sphere effector, I also added that. That should be up on Gumroad now. So if you want to have a sphere for all the particle trails to go around, it should be possible. And you can set a radius value. I made it so that the SDF, you can just subtract in order to make the sphere have a surface which works out pretty well. One thing that I do want to implement, but this is kind of further out, is to make it so that the empties scale will affect the uh, scale of the sphere, but not on all axes at once. So you can scale it so that uh, it's a cylinder by just scaling the sphere and making it infinitely long, but I'll save that for next time. Again, time. All right. Um, oh dang, I'm gonna clean this up right now because this is, uh, man, I'm surprised I left that, that messy, even when I uploaded this. Hmm. Organization, it's very important, and I should not be slacking when it comes to that. All right. Anything else? I think that should be everything. Uh, noise, velocity. New, whoop, accidentally pressed F3. New points. There we go, that should be good. And that's just trail. There we go. Okay, let me save this in its current condition. Just size collision. And I always right click the uh oh. Where is. Ah, there it is. This object right here is just the nodes list. I made it so that it's just a plane but without a face so that it just won't render. It's just so that people can see all the nodes at a glance. Which, as we can see here, the store mesh velocity option is there, the node group, but this does not have the acceleration option. Which I should probably put in eventually, but I need to do some bug fixing before then. Please make tutorials on how simulation nodes work. Well, that's why I do the live streams, so that you can see how they work. But if you want uh, beginner content regarding that, that's compressed and uh, beginner friendly. I think Arendelle has some good beginner courses when it comes to that. I would need to jump, uh, double check that. I do not have time to make tutorials at the moment. What you're seeing now is the time that I do have to do Blender content, and as you can see, it is rather limited. We're coming up to an hour, and I will probably end the stream at that hour. And for all the people <laughs> I get, I think in the past two days I've gotten like 10 requests to make tutorials on different projects. On YouTube alone, on Twitter and Instagram, there's about as many, if not more. And unfortunately, I just don't have the time. But also, right now, I would say it's not the best time to learn geometry now. Well, it's not... Hmm. Simulation nodes has been very glitchy and inconsistent in 4.0 and 3.6. In 4.1, it will be stable enough to use regularly. They fixed the Control z bug, I think. I am going to press Control z a ton and see if any of these simulations break. 
Apparently not, so they fixed that bug as well. That was the most annoying thing in 4.0 and 4.1, but now that is fixed. So now I can say that simulation nodes are now convenient and stable enough to use regularly. Which, 3.6 was more stable than 4.0, which is very interesting to say. 4.0, things got a lot more unstable across the board, but simulation nodes took a hit with that control Z bug. Because in 3.6, the only major, major bug with it is that if you turned off the cache, there would be issues. Which, for me, I usually turn off the cache when editing uh, node groups because then I don't have to wait to see the results of the changes. But if you have the cache enabled, you're usually good. I would say, for the most part, you're good. The only real bug with that one was that uh, materials were wiped, which was very annoying and the workarounds were even more annoying. But 3.6 simulation nodes were decent enough to use, even in production. Uh, but then 4.0, new bugs got introduced, and then in 4.1 it looks like they're being fixed. So 4.1, if you want to get on the simulation nodes train, that would be good. It seems like the cache bug was fixed. The control Z bug was fixed, and the material bug was fixed. So, you're probably good. Can you explain how to make a fancy falloff node? Um, yeah, it's the, the... So, I renamed it to the logarith or LG falloff node. It's just this. But the way it works is... I, I've shown this quite a bit in the past. But it's a logarithm, a minimum, and a multiply. And the basic concept is that you just have 0.999 on both of these, and it turns the emission fall off to be extremely sharp. So it's just this, nothing too complicated. You just have a value of your choice, you do that. It's just something I discovered a few years ago that made emissive gradients look extremely crisp. So this right here is this node group. It's just packaged easily. Because if I were to go and turn this off, we would see that this is a very plain and boring gradient. But if I were to do this, then we can see very nice highlights. And I accidentally put that there. Okay. We can see very nice crisp gradients, which I could go even more crisp by turning it up. So you get this very nice, almost iridescent quality from it. Let's see. You should write that statement impotent at the top of all your socials. Uh, yeah, I, I'm assuming that's about the tutorial statement. Yeah, I do need to make a... I do need to write a statement that, one, I'm not available for commission work at the moment because I am way too busy for that. <laughs> and then, two, uh, I can't make tutorials because I'm way too busy for that. So basically, I'm busy. But busy for very good reasons. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm just checking if I uh, missed anything in the chat. Uh, the fire. This thing I would like to upgrade, but another limitation of EV next, which has been delayed to 4.2. It has been delayed for so long. Originally, EV next was planned to release in Blender 3.2. I remember checking weekly or daily to see the tra to track how the improvements were happening, like the uh, ray tracing, the screen space uh, illumination, global illumination, well, screen space illumination. But for a while, up until 3.2, it looked like it was going to make it. But then all of a sudden, development stopped. And then I think in 3.4, they updated the... They forgot to update the release notes for when EVNX was supposed to re release. So for a few updates after, the page for that just said it's supposed to release in 3.2. But then I think in 3.6, they changed it so that it would say, oh, it's going to be released in 4.1. And now two years later, since 3.2 got released, it's now postponed to 4.1 which has the potential to be disastrous because or 4.2 
I said that right, because 4.2 is going to be the LTS release. And most likely there will be quite a few bugs with EV Next because, well, there won't be a ton of users figuring out what the bugs are since it's not being released in 4.1. So, and they mentioned this in the um, developer log with the delay announcement. But basically, it's risky to put in such a big feature in an LTS release, especially one that, well, EV Next, it's slow, it's not ready. But it it has the potential to go pretty bad. Which, with EV Next, the new features that we're getting are possibly better shadows, but right now their performance is absolutely terrible. In Simple Scenes, which I think I showcased, no, I didn't stream those. But actually, no, we can try this out right now if it doesn't crash. So here we can see that we're getting, let's boot this up to 60 frames per second. So here, oh, we're getting 70 frames per second. Very nice. Let's switch this to be EV Next. And let's see if this crashes. But basically, EV Next, since the 3.2 release, there, from what I've seen, there haven't really been new features being added, just delays, which I'm not sure. I think the virtual shadow maps might have been new, but I'm not sure. But it seems to be developer time that has delayed it, not necessarily new features. Oof, that is rough. But we are getting 60 frames per second, so that's good. Wow. But uh, the shadows are less than ideal. Though I will say, the shadows are pretty crisp. So maybe, uh, well, the splotchiness is there. There were a few things with EV Next that I was very concerned about, but I think they might have fixed it. One of them was the HDRI uh, illumination being extremely splotchy versus EV. And as we can see, it, yeah, it takes so long for shaders to load up. <sighs> Alright, so let's set this to metallic. Ah, it was this. We can see here whenever you update, it looks very extremely splotchy, which wasn't the case in uh, Eevee, regular old Eevee. But even on very glossy materials, it seems like they fixed it on that front. So that'll be good. Though I can see here that there are errors with the uh, screen space refraction. Looks like uh, some pixels are just being skipped over. That could be fixed fairly easily. But it's just one of those things where We'll be waiting quite a long time for EV Next, and what we do get is not going to be... They're looking for feature parity with regular EV, with a few perks. So it won't be a massive update, it's going to be a few additional things. But a complete rewrite under the hood to hopefully make it faster. Which here, we're getting a pretty, pretty solid frame rate, so we'll see. At the moment, EV Next, I don't recommend working with it, but maybe in 4.2 it will be good enough. We'll see. What I'm waiting for is global illumination and illumination from emissive materials. Well, in EV Next at the moment, there is screen space illumination, which you should not rely on, but it's good that we're finally getting it. Because there was there were add-ons in I think Three, maybe in 3.0 for EV screen space global illumination. The downside was it was fairly slow because it was an add-on. It wasn't, it wasn't something that tapped into the EV code. It was mostly just shader tricks. But it did work, and it worked pretty well. So us getting that in EV Next by default, and it being rather performant, seemingly as performant as screen space reflections, because kind of uses the same tech, same passes, I would think. It's good to have, but it should not be relied on for uh, emissive materials. But, yeah. Actually, EV Next, I think that was supposed to come out around the same time that Unreal Engine uh, 5 came out. Maybe a little after. But now it's two years later and we're still trying to get it. So, actual global illumination, I don't think we'll be getting that anytime soon. Just because... That is a very complicated task to do in real time. Right now we have the reflection probes and 
Um, I'm surprised I'm getting 60... Oh, no, we're getting... No, that's probably just the, the other parts. Not the shaders that are lacking. Though this is much more performant than uh, the other one was. Let me, let me test the other file. So, let's see, where's the windy grass? There we go. Let me just open this really quick. Some, uh, some people wanted me to do a breakdown of the windy grass effect because, um, this one, I kind of planned on releasing it, but again, don't have time, but maybe I'll release it someday. I was referencing the GDC talk about, uh, how they made the wind system in God of War. Now, my system is much simpler because, well... One, I don't have the ability to use the GPU for these simulations, but also, in God of War, they used a 3D simulation system for the wind. A dynamic 3D simulation. Now, it was pretty coarse. I think it was 32 by 32 by 32 voxels. But whenever you would throw the axe, it would cause a velocity field to be, thrown, to be created from the axe in 3D space, and it would diffuse over time making something that would look really, really good. In this scenario, I'm just doing very simple, hey, we get the velocity from the mesh, put it to the uh, points around uh, the axe. Well, in this case, we can see. Oh, and that's another thing about EV Next that I need to showcase, point clouds. Um, the velocity just goes to the points, and then these points, I just wobble like a virtual point, if that makes sense. And then I point... I rotate the instance to that wobbled virtual point, as we can see here. I just move it up because that makes the... If it's just where the original point was, it doesn't look that great. So you just put it up and then it makes it look like the instances are wobbling. So it works good enough. So I'll just showcase the nodes in case you want to recreate it. I might put it up on Gumroad, but we'll see. Oh, and I misspelled neighbor, which I fixed that spelling before, but I didn't resave the file. <laughs> I remember that. But this part is just to kind of diffuse the velocity by its neighbors. It's really not necessary. It was an experiment, but you don't need it. You don't need it. But here's the velocity stuff and then getting the velocity from the mesh. Pretty similar to what I did for the particle system. But that's that, the effector making it so that that'll be like that, yada yada. But there we go. I wanted to try this out with like spaceship thrusters, then like pointing towards the ground and then making, you know, all that happen. It would be really cool, but again, don't have time. The with. So if you wanted to do this a bit better, more like the God of War GDC talk, you would want to have a grid to do a basically a velocity simulation on. For the velocity to fully diffuse and disperse and then you sample that grid and put it onto your grass or whatever objects you have in that field but you don't want to sample nearest because that is a very very uh inefficient sorting algorithm for what you're doing here since the grid of points is in one area you want to oh wait is that even possible yet to say hey i'm in this cell so sample this index I'm not sure. Like, you could use sample nearest, and it would probably be performant enough, but there are faster ways of doing it. I'm not sure if they're possible in Blender, though. Just because saying, hey, I'm in cell, like, 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, 0, 04, like, coordinating those two, maybe with the sample elements node, which is also a new node, which I need to see. Elements, or no, uh, elements... Store elements. That that's why I was talking about. So this, in theory, should reorder. The, actually, I can test this out now. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's go over and switch this to be EV next. Now this file, we should get 60 frames per second uh, in regular EV. But let's try this out in EV next. Oh yep, here we go. Yep, three frames per second. Yay! So here, I'm assuming because of the alpha layers, EV Next is having a very bad time. While here in regular EV land, we can see, wow, 60 frames, well, almost 60 frames per second. But now it's pretty much locked once the cache goes through. But we can see that's very fast. While in EV Next, most unperformed, like, 
this is horrible. Which is why, probably one of the reasons why it's not coming in 4.1. It's nowhere near ready. And I'm assuming that's probably because of the virtual shadow maps. It, it's probably really in a... Well, oh dang, that would be really bad if it, if it was that inefficient when it came to alpha layers because I really hope that's not the case in the end result. That would be really, really bad. Well, hopefully there would be a way to switch between uh, the different modes. Because here, I still need to figure out what the uh, cache that the system, like the buffer thing does. Because if you have it too low, it just breaks. Which I don't think is a good idea because there have been... Uh-oh. Nope, still laggy. There have been files where it's just like, hey, you're, you don't have a big enough buffer. Too bad. Like, the resolution doesn't go down, just the... it breaks. So, hopefully that'll change, but we will see. Eventually. Let's see. Point IDs are very annoying to work with due to them continuously shifting. Correct. That's something that I, I had to account for in my particle system. And... I think I did an okay job. I'm still not sure. I don't think it's foolproof, but it works good enough. The method you suggested works as long as there isn't over a 5 frame delay in creating the points. A 5 frame delay? Interesting. I don't know about too much about that. But I'll have to research that. They're like... I haven't had time to look into that more. I just got a version that works good enough. But there should be a method for... Maybe even with the sort elements node, I can fix it. There should be a method of saying, Hey, let's find out what age these particles spawned in. So if you have that, then... If you have the particle age... Or no, the frame that the particle spawned in. That eliminates so many particles from needing to be uniquely identified for the trailing system. You only need to deal with how many respond in in that frame. But I just need to figure out a good way of doing that. Which I will, eventually. Alright. My biggest issue for me is that more delays to Vulcan... Oh yeah, Vulcan... I don't think Vulcan is actively in development at the moment. But I, need, I would need to double check that. Even X got delayed, and Vulcan I think got delayed delayed. From what I heard. So, we'll see if it ever happens. Again, EV Next was in development for a while, and was supposed to come out two years ago. So two extra years of delays, and it's still not ready. And still pretty far from ready. Wait, it's not going to be in 4.1? No, it's my first time hearing this. Yep, it's just not ready. Which I... I don't know why all these delays have been happening. I'm assuming that just there hasn't been developer time. But two years, even for an open source project, is very extreme for a feature that has been hyped up this much. So how many years until we get EV next? Well, hopefully we only have to wait like four to five more months. I forget when 4.2 is coming out. Actually, maybe six months. Who knows? But what I'm worried about is that it'll be released with the LTS. Which means that it will be upgraded, but they mentioned in the devlog that there may be some things that'll have to be redone if there are big bugs that they won't be able to fix because it's in the LTS. Which defeats the purpose of an LTS. But I don't have enough technical knowledge to be maybe as concerned as I should be, but I think there may be really things might be messy during the LTS. I hope not, because Blender releases have had issues recently. 3.6 simulations were bugged significantly. And then 4.0, well there are quite a few, there I've asked around with other people, other Blender creators that do what I do, and most of them are skipping 4.0 because it is so unstable, and all the add-ons broke. But yeah. 
But I think 4.1 will be good. It seems like quite a few of the bugs got squashed. And I think some add-on comp compatible, some add-on compatibility breaking bugs were fixed as well. So maybe we'll be back in business in 4.1. That's so frustrating. I've been waiting for Eevee Next to continue my project because Cycles was unstable for my needs. I have been waiting for a long time for Vertex Displacement. It should have been in Eevee, in regular Eevee. But we, I've been waiting for that for a long time because many projects that I create rely on that would rely on that like even this grass this grass the instances are, are rotating because i can't displace the geometry in um in the shader space which is much faster because it's on the gpu i can't do that and i've wanted to do this for multiple years but i can't because it's been delayed all of the little updates to eevee got delayed into eevee next which would have been fine if eevee next didn't get delayed by two years because it's probably very possible for Eevee to have this kind of vertex displacement. But it's just been delayed because it was packaged in with the major upgrade. But we'll see. In your Spiderbot 3, can you please show what you do inside the invert rotation frame? What? Hmm. I... I'm trying to think of what project that could be. I'll, yeah, I'll see if I can find. Is it the one where the spider robot has like the red tank of uh, Kool Aid? Let's see if I can find that one. It should be my 2023 projects. Uh, let's see. A robot. No, is that it? Angular Velocity, nope, that's not it either. Here, let's check this one. So, it wasn't, no, it wasn't this one. I'm still proud of this project. Making a, ba basically making a, a rig inside of geometry nodes and then applying physics to it. It was such a messy project, but it did work. Okay, let's go and try to find the uh, the right version of this. I believe it came after... But let's do a little test. Robot claw collision. Nope, that's not it. Uh, hmm. Is this one it? Nope, that's not it either. All right. Man, if only I named my projects something other than Robot Test 5 and Robot Test 4. Let's see. Robot leg, geometry node, IK test. Nope, that's not it. Robot claw collision. No, that's not it. Hmm. I'll see if I can find it. Rigid body dynamics. Nope. Oh no, this is it. Okay. It's in the claw collision one. I must have upgraded the project without uh, relabeling it. Okay, so in this one... Let's see, the invert rotation. Let's see if I can find that. So with this project, for those of you who haven't seen it before, I like this project quite a bit. Because it's, it's you know, the IK, the robot stuff. But in this case, it's all of them combined. So we have the claw collision, which is one node group. The IK system, which is also physics-based, which is another group. The moving cables and the internal Kool-Aid. So let's see if I can figure out, and all of this is spawned from this. That, that's what it's spawned in by. Like it just sees those edges and then it creates everything else, which is incredible. It's so convenient. No manual animation is done. It's incredible. But it is rather inconvenient to use because this was kind of before I started using node groups a lot. So there would be setups like this, which would be rather inconvenient let's see hmm. uh location rotation wobble maybe it's this one 
I'll just showcase this just in case. Which have the simulation nodes color changed? Because they look a little bit different. Or just the simulation zone. There, this is one node. It's not two. There's only, in the simulation nodes update, there was one simulation node. Only one. But that's the internals of that. And then for the location wobble, it's just... Oh, no, wait. The spider bot. Oh, wait, do you... Oh, wait, is that the... Oh, the Stickman one. Okay. Right, that one. Yep, I'll go and boot that one up. Hello, what's the simulation materials? Now, in 4.1, half a year later, since th Blender 3.6 came out with simulation nodes, materials are finally supported. I mentioned this before, but br brief history of this. Blender simulation nodes, materials used to work. But two weeks before 3.6 got released, a bug was discovered where simulation materials would be a little bit glitched out in the render, occasionally. So two weeks before release, in the beta, simulation materials got removed. I did not realize this because I was using one of the beta builds and I thought not, not much would change. So when I finally got 3.6, I was taken by surprise by simulation materials being completely gone. And it was um, not fun at all. Let's see, uh, spider bot, where is, where did I put that project? Uh, where is the procedural animation? Procedural, nope, that is the wrong one. Okay, I need to look at my simulation projects. One second, everyone. But yes, now in Blender 4.1, it's finally, finally fixed. Spider Sim V2. Ah, here we go. So here is the spider uh, simulation. Simulated materials would be so cool. Well, no, not simulated materials. Materials are just now no longer removed whenever you have a simulation zone. So now I can resurrect a few projects. But it's funny. Now that we have that, I don't have time to resurrect them. Maybe when 4.0 actually comes out, I'll have time. But... Anyway, uh, right here, let's see, nope, that's the foot placement simulation, which, again, all of these uh, spider bots are just controlled by a few points, and they can be an arbitrary amount of points, as we can see here. But those move, and then I just make the uh, stuff there. Okay, so, hmm, let's see, this node group is messy, I should probably... Well, it's actually not the worst. Which, let's see, I'll just showcase everything in case you need to see it. But there's a reason why I haven't released this. Because it's, uh, oh dang. Ignore the Euler to Rotation node. That's just a versioning thing with Blender 4.1. Which is a little annoying that all these nodes will be procedurally added. And just because they look messy. But anyway, let's see. Invert rotation. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, invert rotation is just multiplying the angle by negative. Yeah, no, that, that part's pretty simple. Just takes... Just takes a value, and if, um... Yeah. Multiply add. Like, this could just be a switch node. It just means multiply it by 1 or negative 1. Like, uh, I'm not going to save this, but it's just, hey, multiply it by 1 or a negative 1 depending if it's true or false. I should have used a switch node, but actually, did the switch node exist back then? I forget. All right. Oh, do you know how to do a kind of laser geographic scan thing, if you know what I mean? Funnily enough, I was recently contacted uh, if I knew how to make that exact effect, and like a LiDAR effect, and that part's pretty simple you would just ray cast out from a cylinder according to the normals and then um like place points wherever it would end up i'm not gonna go over it right now but it it's possible but if you want to do like a laser scan effect that would probably be a shader thing but another caveat unfortunately in ev and cycles we are actually wait do we have in cycles i think you're able to get the proximity to an object 
in the shader and then that would make that significantly easier but in Eevee, we don't have that. Another thing that game engines, like with Eevee Next, if you're wondering why I'm so frustrated, game engines have had so many of the features that Eevee Next would have, and even features that doesn't have, like the like pixel depth offset and such. They've had that for decades. And, okay, maybe not decades, but a decade. But to get that in Eevee... It had to be an Eevee Next and delayed for so incredibly long, which is annoying. All right. Um, okay, so to wrap the stream up, I want to showcase a few other things. So in 4.1, we are getting some useful nodes. Again, in 3.6, we only got two nodes. So we're getting more than that, which is a good sign. But this may be the last for a while. Okay, we get the menu switch, we get the uh, index switch, we get the sort elements node, and then, let's see, what are the other nodes? Uh, we get the, well, this one doesn't technically count as a new node, but we get the set curve normal set to free. Again, a lot of things that we should have had when the nodes were created, but better late than never. And then, what's the next one? The bake node. Which is the reason that simulation nodes got fixed, so I'm very glad that we finally got that as well. <laughs> Ugh, that is... It's good that we have it, finally. A weird thing about the menu switch versus the index switch, which the devs were talking about, is that there's no extension input. So if you want to add in a new input, you can't here. You have to go inside the node and add it, which is very weird, because I think even the... Yeah, even the simulation node has an extension socket, but here it doesn't. It seems like just an, an oversight. But yeah, if you add in new things, at least for the time being, you need to add in it like this. But you just rename this to be, hey, orange and apple. I'm using the examples that they had. And then you just switch between this and this. Now, one thing that you need to know about the menu switch node is that if it's multiple layers deep in vertex groups, you cannot uh, send it through. So, here, let me make a node group. Did I say vertex groups? I meant node groups. I might have said that correctly. So here we can see in a node group, you just put the socket into here and it works. But here, let's go and add in another group. So if we go into here... Oh no, it's still... Oh, it actually still works. I am surprised huh oh no wait i think i know why that happens okay so no never mind forget what i said let's make let's put this into another i need to test this out there is a scenario where if it's multiple layers deep in a node group it won't be able to connect properly but I'm not sure if that was a bug or if that just was fixed. Anyway, uh, some of the caveats, if one of the inputs, one of the menu inputs has a different name. Actually, wait a second. If the default is orange and apple. Oh, okay. Maybe they fixed it. I'm not sure. But anyway, this will make node setups a lot easier to work with simply because now we can, like in all the modifiers, there are these enum switches, or menu switches. Like right here, you can switch between all those, and it's easy. The previous workaround, which there were two levels of workaround to this, we would need to use, we would have to make an index switch in order to simulate a menu switch, which was very annoying. You would basically have multiple switch nodes to say, hey, if the value is equal to 1 or equal to 2, then switch between that input and then the next one. And then for the group output, we would have a integer. And then we would have like, oh, this is like for, let's say a socket like this. We would have inputs slash edge slash face slash spline. And then it would kind of imply, okay, if it's one, it'll be point. If it's two, edge, and then so on. But now we have the ability to make these. Now, unfortunately, uh, it's planned, but the devs, again, didn't have time to 
make all of these menu switches exposed, which is something that is on is the end goal. Uh, I was told I, uh, one of the devs, Delai, uh, re or was it Pablo? I think it was Delai replied to me in a tweet saying that this is one of the end goals, but it apparently it won't be in 4.1 because again time. So we still would need a workaround in order to make this happen. So we can have sort by this, that, that, and that, which is extremely hacky in order to do because you would need inputs for all of them and then a menu switch at the end. But computationally, it would be the same uh, speed because all the ones that are not output do not get calculated. And also for the end user, all they would see is a group input. So it would be very, very good. So yeah, it's good to know. Now I really wonder how they would add in things like this because it would be very good for end users in the modifier tabs or even in node groups to have these buttons exposed. But unfortunately, I'm not sure it'll be ages before we get that. Because I don't think it's even on the horizon. But it's interesting. Like any button that the user could click on needs to be able to be exposed in a node group if you want actual node group assets to be good enough. Because the hard-coded nodes are good, but the end goal of geometry nodes is to replace every single modifier. Which at the moment, if we take a look at the uh, bevel node, here we can see buttons, we can see menu switches, a lot of menu switches, and uh, nested panels. Which actually, where are... Maybe that's in the mirror modifier. So in the mirror modifier... Nope, not even in there. Hmm. Well, in the particle system, there are nested subpanels. So to get node groups that are as good as these, as regular modifiers, all those would need to be added. The button, the ability to have these buttons, menu switches are finally in there, but still a little bit hacking in their implementation. Uh, another thing that was viewed was the ability to also float inputs, like float curve inputs. Those were worked on for a little bit, but then abandoned. Not sure what happened to that but also the ability to swap out what inputs are visible based on if they're connected or not. Another thing that's on the horizon, but we'll see if they become uh, a thing. Because that wouldn't be too... Well, I don't know the code, but I would imagine they wouldn't be the most difficult thing to implement. It would be a another little checkbox for the group or for an input here let's have an add node and here we can see uh, hide value hide and modifier single value and another one would be hide if not used and then if it's not being used if a switch node is deactivated then it just wouldn't show up in the end result which would be very very convenient but that's one of the end goals for making these kinds of assets in the end they'll be useful but it'll be a while. There's also the function node, which isn't making it into uh, 4.1. It was a community developed thing, but we'll see if that becomes, we'll see if that gets developed. There has been a history of function-esque like nodes that have been developed by the community, but they would be worked on for a bit and then abandoned. I really don't want that to be the case with the function node or the math. The yeah, the function node, the math node, basically where you could put in e equals mc squared and it would actually work. Um, but that would make geometry nodes a lot more robust, especially when doing physics stuff, because instead of having to convert everything to nodes, you could put in the actual equations and they would work. So again, end goal geometry nodes, making it a lot more serious in its... Uh, being a visual programming language, shall we say. Because Houdini has their VEX code system, and while I don't know too much about it, it can do functions. Unreal Engine has their own HLSL node, which uh, for the Niagara system, which relies on functions and such, which is actually kind of similar to the um, 
no, not, well, okay. It's similar only in the sense where you could plug in node inputs like this, and then they're turned into variables that you can then output. So only like the function node in that way. You put nodes, uh, node spaghetti into it, you do a function, and then it spits out node spaghetti. So would be nice to have in 4.2 if it gets developed. All right. Let's see. Couldn't you get a switch node to switch between two BIC nodes where one would be still and one for animation? Uh, yes, but the user would not be able to click on the bake button. Which is, you know, just a little not good. Like, the goal is for, like, well, in its initial implementation, the bake node would be, like, you would have your particle system right here, and then you would bake it after the fact. Or you have a very complex operation here, and then bake it after the fact, still or animated. But the problem is, if you want this inside of an asset, so it's like, okay, here is your very complex algorithm, and then, oh, you want to bake it? Okay, good. And then you can change materials afterwards. There you go. But the problem is, at the moment, the user, anyone who's using an asset, cannot interact with this whatsoever. So, again, the goal is so that users never have to look inside the geometry node editor for the asset to work. So, yeah. Would be useful for having all buttons exposed, especially for choosing things like map range types outside of the node group. Yes, that is, again, planned. The menu switch was the kind of the, the first step with that with the menu socket type. But that being implemented for things like the map range, it'll be a while. Right now, we a new workaround has been created, which on, in one case, oh no, but also it's better than what we had previously, where we would have to have changed uh, chained uh, switch nodes. So here, if we wanted, we could change this to be a float. It's also a little weird that the menu can be a field. I have mixed feelings about that. That I don't think that can be a, the case. But here, if we do this, we'll have one that's linear and then one that is smooth step. So here, we could put in the names linear and smooth step. Smooth step step and this is only for geometry nodes not the shader editor which is unfortunate so now if you had a node group which let's go node uh make group connect this into here you have a value you just have it like that so this would be the newly created workaround now hopefully in the future we won't have to do workarounds like these but we'll see so now in a node group you can expose whether or not it's smoother step or not. And here as well, you can connect this. So now you have the ability to switch this in the editor, which is really good. It's a good first step in the right direction. There we go. Because that will be extremely useful later on. Okay, so uh, I should wrap up the stream. We're almost at an hour and 30 minutes. But the last node that I should go over in terms of the new nodes is the sort elements node. So these three in the sort elements node, so elements, these are the new nodes in 4.1. I'm not sure if I'm missing any new music. Oh yeah, that might be a little bit loud. Let me tone that down by a bit. Sorry about that. That means that we've passed the uh, one and a half hour mark. Um, I think, I feel like there's another one. Like this, like the set curve normal node, I'm not going to treat it as a new node. It's just an extra option, a very needed option, but a new option nonetheless. Uh, but here we go. So sort elements. This one, I still don't know entirely what it does. I haven't tested it myself. But in theory, if we get the index node, and then we turn on attribute text. Here, let's go and look at this. So the index, the index we couldn't edit before. You can do it with add-ons and with other 
uh, operations in Blender in order to just reorder things without changing the mesh's shape and such. So here we can see, and also by the way in 4.1 for those of you who have joined later, the attribute text is actually legible now. It's no longer as super small and it was no longer that weird deep blue that would blend into every single color under the sun. Now it's white with a drop shadow, so it'll work even if the color is bright white. You know, it's not the most visible thing, but it is still visible, which is really, really good. It's really good. I'm. It was a community edition, and I am so happy about that. So, with the index. The group ID, I... I need to look this up again because I'm not sure if it's another node that I'm thinking about. But I think if we plug in the position, it would reorder the index, but I am not sure. Nope, it does. Okay, good. So here we can see that the index might still be a little hard to... Oh, there we go. That should be easier to see now. Can I change the size yet? That was kind of planned, but... Maybe that's in the, um, no, I can't resize it there. Maybe in the, uh, properties. But here we can see, let's see, it goes 2840. Oh, hmm. Okay. So maybe it's sorting from the bottom up, but maybe in order to make it a little bit more like the proper grid that I was imagining in my head. There we go. Oh, uh, no, it's still... Oh, no, wait. I wanted that to be add, not multiply. Okay, here we go. So with a setup like this, this grid is now reordered. The actual in index is reordered. So this is very useful because... Remember how I said before that... Um sampling a grid and points by a certain value like matching two values and doing that is difficult well now it's going to be easier because we can now reorder the index so now since this is now position based this grid it's now aligned to a kind of scan line pattern 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and so on while before since this is a subdivided grid the indices would be a bit all over the place here we have zero one is over there two's over there, and so on. So now that it can be reordered, it's good. I still don't know what the group ID would do. So let's do a random value. I think I might know what this does. Or actually, wait, how would I do this? Hmm. I guess I could just snap part of it. So it would sort one area first, and then it would move on to the next one. Uh, hmm. Maybe I set this to negative one? Ah, okay, so it is changing something. I'm assuming that this just changes what which area is sorted first, and then it'll sort the other ones after, and then stack the, all, all the um, IDs next time. So if you wanted, like in my particle system, all the particles have a set ID value, I could just plug the ID in there, and then it would change. So I could just go and add in a random value, and it would sort these. Like, it wouldn't be 0 to 100, it would be however many points there are, but it would be better. As we can see, that's, that's good. So if this would be, like, 0 to 1, it wouldn't be that great. But if I just reord the index manually, or using another method and then fed it into there, it would sort them correctly. And it probably would be pretty fast because they're using a good sorting algorithm for that. But here we go. Right now, a very nice and sorted grid of points, which this can be very useful if you want to make GPU-esque simulations. Now, not actual GPU simulations because, well, uh, that's a whole nother topic. But it works, and it should work pretty well. Now, ideally, you would want to bake this out eventually. Actually, how fast is it? Pretty fast, it seems. Like for how, how many are here? 
Let's go up to the last number up here. Uh, 16,000. Maybe it's just because there's so many numbers on screen. <laughs> that, that's probably why. But yeah. That should, should be everything new in, uh, in 4.1 for now. I'm forgetting... Are the Matrix nodes in? No. Okay. The Matrix nodes might not be added this time around. Okay. There was a build where there were Matrix nodes that I played around with, and I was able to um, fix up my old uh, mesh folding system to include those, which I do have saved. But if those aren't in there, it, it's fine. There were also plans to have the volume nodes in 4.1, but the devs realized that they were they did not have enough time to add those in 4.1, which was very interesting because that was the first thing that they worked on in 2024. Was getting the volume nodes in, but uh, yeah, they when they when they were realizing that uh, well, never mind. Um. That should be everything. I don't know what else to go over. But Sort Elements node, gonna be good. It'll be very, very necessary. Again, making it so that no tool, like all the tools that were hard-coded into Blender are now editable by users well, without even building Blender, which is good. So there we go flipping the index like that. Now, in the past, you could just go and make points and then make them go out in a grid like this. And the actual grid node has indices laid out like this, except I think it's top down. I forget which orientation it's in. But I used that for my Facerum simulation because I was replicating the way that a GPU Facerum simulation would happen because, again, it's all pixels. Parallel pixels being simulated with precision, float point precision. But yeah, speaking of float point precision, with vertex shaders, or vertex displacement, which I wanted to do in years past, I wanted to make a float point precision error uh, shader instead of actually doing with it with geometry nodes because that's slow. Where are you from? I saw you asked that twice. Um, I'm from the United States of America. But yeah, it's great to at least have a workaround. Yes, having a workaround is better than not having the option at all. It's much better. Because with uh, geometry nodes, uh, there's still a lot that we can't do. And I mentioned this before, and I'm actively working to see if it's possible to make a view layer attribute node with help from some people in this community. But there, there's a lot of data that we don't have access to, and that's very necessary if we want geometry nodes to be as good as modifiers. Because as soon as it gets as good as modifiers, geometry nodes will be a hundred times better than modifiers, because we can edit it to our specifications. And again, simulations in modifiers. Make your own script. Well, it's not that simple. Making a script is easy. Making a node that gets all the data you want is more difficult because that's C++, not Python. And C++ is weirder than Python in, in some, by, from a certain point of view. But yeah. But making your own script, I have needed, I've needed to use Python scripts in the past. Those are still good. And they have a purpose. Especially on the objects level, because geometry nodes is on a geometry level. But making a Python script to do everything that geometry node geometry nodes does, even the simple stuff, that would be a long Python script. And geometry nodes is just way more convenient. Give Arendelle 100k in a year, and he'll get geonodes there. Well, community development is something that I'm very interested in, because again, the geometry node freeze is currently in place. We may be getting the last nodes for the next three months to half year. We'll see. Or maybe longer. Like, again, with geometry nodes and everything with, like, Eevee. If it's 
going to be released on time or later, chances are it's going to be later. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see how long the delay is. But community additions are still on the table. There are still community developers actively developing stuff. I forget the Sort Elements node was a community development. But it would be good to, uh, to make the nodes. And in my explorations with trying to make a view layer attribute node, I still know that there's like a 10% chance that it gets approved if I were able to make it and do a pull request. Now getting to there is still going to be a journey with my very limited C++ coding experience. But even if that was the case, it still might not be in Geometry Nodes' vision at the moment. But it would be better than the devs having to hard code every single node because as we could see, uh, just getting an active camera node at the moment, we currently only have this data. We currently, unless you use a driver setup, which is limited and extremely inconvenient, you can't get the data like, oh, the uh, like the resolution, the camera angles and such. All you have is the location, rotation, and scale from the camera, which is good enough for aligning instances to the camera, but it's not, it's not really useful for camera calling because you actually need to know how far the camera can see to camera call. And there were talks to implement like all the other camera data. Uh, some people from this community have done that in their own builds of Blender, but it would be better to have a generalized node. That's something that the devs bring up a lot. Having a generalized node is better than having a specific node. That's one reason why stuff like uh, fall off nodes weren't implemented. Someone made the node and proposed it, but the developer said, oh, that could be a node group, which at the moment, and it still can't really be made. And that was like nine months to maybe even a year ago at this point. But just because it can be made in a node group doesn't mean that it should, at least not in this point, because node groups are still not great. If you want to switch the object info from original to relative, you can't do that. We don't have access to buttons. We don't have access to these menus and such. Node groups are not ready yet, which you can clearly see that from the hair nodes that were made in 3.4. They're just not ready, not convenient enough, not use, not, they don't have a good enough UI yet. They're not good enough to be modifiers, but that will come in time. And then the other part that modifiers need is more data. Because, uh, yeah, like one eventual thing that I want to do is make it so that uh, all the force fields are compatible with my simulation system. Because in theory, if I had access to the view layer attributes, I would possibly be able to tell what data is in every single turbulence node. Now, there would be a limit because you can't have it work for every single one unless I used a repeat so but I'm getting ahead of myself in theory it would be possible but not yet not yet because if you uh, well it couldn't be done with drivers because you would need a string input and having a view layer attribute with a string output would be really really good but getting ahead of ourselves So the Blender repository is in C++ and on Python. Uh, Geometry Notes is in C++. And the real-time compositor and maybe the shader editor. I would have to double check that. But currently, Blender is mostly Python. I, be I think so. Mostly Python, but the most recent stuff is in C++ for speed reasons, as I've been, as I've seen in the developer stuff. Speaking of modifiers, what do they do to the normal modifiers UI? It's a hellscape now. I might be in the minority here, but while it is more inconvenient, it is logistically better. Because right now, you can clearly see, okay, here's edit, here's generate. It's like the shader editor menu. People don't really complain about the shader edi editor menu. They're like, oh no, that's good. This is technically better. Because now, rather than having a huge menu with all the modifiers in it, all these are now compartmentalized. 
So if someone's like, oh, wait, I don't want to search through a gigantic menu to find like uh, the mirror modifier. Like how many people are specifically going into the modifier tab to add in physics? Not that often. So if you're like, hmm, well, if I want to edit data, then maybe that would be in the edit things like data transfer, mesh cache, generate. It's better. It is better. That's why they did it. It's just, it will take some getting used to. It already exists in the shader editor and geometry node editor. People don't complain about that. It is I accidentally hit a hotkey to mute my audio. Sorry about that. All right. Well, that's probably a sign that I should probably end the stream. But what I was saying, I don't know how much you heard, but basically this menu, it takes getting used to. It breaks hundreds of tutorials. Well, not entirely, but it is better. It is better. All right. So yeah, that is... Blender 4.1, it's basically quite a bit of the stuff that should have been in 4.0 if they had time. Lots of fixes that should have been in 4.0 and so on. But we're finally getting it now. So I would recommend skipping 4.0 if you can to go to 4.1 when it comes out. But 3.6 at the moment is, it's the LTS release. So stay in the LTS. And then switch to 4.1 when uh, when it comes out. And then 4.2, I'm worried about EV Next being extremely buggy, and that I kind of foresee it being an ex it being in the experimental tab for 4.2. And then 4.3, it'll be properly ported and replacing the old EV. But we'll see. But that's just my prediction. All right. Okay, that should be everything. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all next time. Have a good one. And if you have... Um, oh, right. The particle system, I will probably update with those updated features. And I think I did update everything. But yeah, 4.1 will be good. We're getting a nice new bundle of nodes. So it will be good. Alright, have a good one.